me i mean properly planted yeah. Uh, well yeah that that was my journey towards music and uh, how surya brothers came into the scene and things were yeah yeah i really uh, so i saw this uh, the post that you do this uh, remember the trend of say, posting a performance photo every day so i i see you all this uh, <laughs> with the tiger pants and the I, i really didn't want to do that but at the end of the day it was it, it at the end of the day all, because me chennai are it gave certain exposure also that you know okay i said oh, why not why why not i do that so yeah yeah the tiger pants yes <laughs> so we- <laughs> nice beard huh? i love how the black and white tone <laughs> <laughs> yeah so hi everyone uh, welcome to another episode of my podcast uh, so this is a special podcast because we are also doing it live on facebook live uh, so i have uh, this gentleman from sri lanka uh, pubudu surya perumar of surya brothers hi pubudu hi hi chanaya and hi uh... from all over the world people who are watching and uh, basically all the sri lankans and as well who are joined online with us hi thanks so thanks so actually inviting me chanda yeah I mean, so how are you doing pupudu all these lockdowns and everything what's happening in sri lanka <laughs> uh, well uh, i mean sri lanka is to like slowly getting things going on like uh, you know with all these opening of pubs and clubs and all the restaurants and everything but uh, say uh, still uh, the airports have closed as usual i think probably i think on the month of august these guys are planning to open up other than that uh, shanaya i think uh, probably by next uh, financial uh, yeah i think uh, basically at the 2021 i think we might be able to see some you know things blooming up in terms of the entertainment industry right now everything is paused i mean and there's no such magic is happening it's just everything so calm and quiet uh, here and there are the live uh, streaming gigs are happening but uh, there's nothing major when it comes to live sessions live gigs or anything like that so it's still a bit stranded just uh, uh, nothing are, are they allowing anybody to play in the clubs or anything or no well uh, there are see uh, there are limitations only uh, 100 people every restaurant or any sort of venue only 100 the maximum number of people is only 100 people that they can accommodate all right, right. but you know no our burgers when they get uh, hand uh, drink in their hands and all that they forget where the hell they are and uh, may <laughs> things go here right so <laughs> <laughs> apart from that i mean the strict regulations are only 100 people can accommodate at any when you are at any given restaurant or a pub or a club or anything like that right uh there are like few here and there live uh, artists are playing but not like it's not like may in a major level it's not being publicized yeah there are here and there are solo artists are playing in like there's a new uh, pub has opened in cinnamon which was called uh, uh, colomba so uh, there are few artists are playing and there's a oh, two soloists are playing in a newly opened pub in nugegoda so there are few things here and there are going but not in a major scale so uh, we are yet to see i mean like this has this lockdown has been a like at the same time it has done bad and it has done damage to a certain level of most industries when it comes to touring the world it has done good dolls in terms of brainstorming i mm. would say i mean coming up with new ideas how to basically uh, get your artistic level get your creativity level to a certain extent i mean this lockdown has done some good so i mean like our operations are going as usual with the surya brothers and everything so uh, i mean apart from the live gigs and everything so yeah i think uh, we are looking forward to next year <laughs> yeah i see because there were some uh, announcements coming up uh, slip not announced the south east yeah and i i am maiden and uh, i think the metal days uh, wakan bangalore open there uh, metal united worldwide everything has got paused so mm. i don't think there's a movement uh, within next year so within this year so 
lot of things I'm actually looking for in personally in terms as an organization and in terms of as an event plan and everything. Uh, we look for a lot of things for next year. Mm. Hopefully, eating, uh, next year, Tamay, I mean, like at the end of the day, we actually was able to make sure this year, I mean, to plan a lot of things for the next, uh, for 2021 and 2022 for a lot of things. Right. So, uh, in a way, this lockdown was able to, we were able to handle it in a positive way rather than being all negative and, you know, lethargic about it and, you know, complain about it. Right. <laughs> so, that's the whole, that's the whole uh, gig was, I mean, that's the whole thing. So, uh, how, how, how's things over there? I, I wanted to ask you that. Yeah, so here uh, they just op- started opening the malls and some of the restaurants okay. for dining. Uh, I don't see any live. I don't think music scene will happen till the end of the year. At least I think the local, so local, you know, pub shows and stuff will probably start end of the year or okay. early next year. Uh, anyway, yeah. but it has given, uh, as you said, the lockdowns have uh, sort of opened our eyes on what is actually important uh, and what is all this, you know, we, mm. all these things that we were <laughs> running, uh, you know, <laughs> running towards, but at the end, it's only like very few things are really I mean, I, I, it actually, I, I mean, at some points we, we tend to, I mean, I mean, as we get busy, we... Like we keep a blind eye on certain things and we just tend to run behind that, like, you know, loose dogs. Yeah, yeah. But down was able to, you know, wait for a second and think what you do. <laughs> to give some, that's a, that sort of a vibe for us. I mean, actually, if you take it in a positive way, I mean, this lockdown did some good to a certain extent for yeah. certain set of people. I mean, not to the, not to everyone. I mean, not to the people who's, making a wage on a daily basis or not like that, but to a certain set of people who actually uh, make their way out of original creativity, mm. it's something good. So I, I, I was, uh, in a way, I was a bit positive on this. And at the same time, I was very, uh, you know, sad that we wouldn't be able to have the live concerts and everything uh, on a traditional format. So, uh, yeah, all everything, nothing yes. to come. Yeah, so Pupu, I don't actually remember how we got connected because I think uh, it probably happened like last year, right? <laughs> I don't really remember how do we. Do you remember? I think we got. We got I think we. I think that credit goes. <laughs> I think that credit should go to uh, Michael from <laughs> yeah, MUWW. I think uh, we we knew each other. I knew that you were actually doing a lot of stuff when it comes to the originality in Philippines. So uh, we, I mean. To be honest, social media acted a huge part in our lives. I, right. I think that, that that actually acts a huge part in our lives when it comes to these uh, times. So when you actually reached out to me saying that uh, about this uh, MEWW, I think that's how we basically got connected. I mean, then from there onwards, we were able to exchange our ideas, exchange our uh, things when it comes to the, whole, the, the this global industry and everything. I think, uh, I think it, it, we, <laughs> we got connected through, uh, well, basically, if you put it in the most simplest way, we got through connected through music. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, heavy metal and rock and roll acted a huge part in our lives. So as a, from an organizer to organizer, I think we got connected through uh, music. Yeah. You know, so like, Pupu, often, yeah, so controlling Pupu, okay. things from... Yeah, can you tell me a little bit about your childhood and then your earlier memories of music? Uh, well, uh, I'm the youngest from the family. I have a brother and uh, his name is Asanga Surya from me. He's also part of the Surya Brothers. So I'll tell you, I, I started, uh, I mean, I, have a, I schooled at Ananda College. And uh, see, uh, being a... Uh, uh, very much of a signal uh, Buddhist pure school and all that. Hare, mm. uh, uh, I'll be honest, with you, this will be the most funniest story. I was into organizing stuff from the school days. I, uh, all right, that's one yeah. major thing for me to have this uh, certain sort of influence going on. And one thing, I mean, it comes to music, uh, my father and my brother was a huge part of the for me to be influenced by this sort, sort of music. Uh, 
while my brother was listening to Poison, Guns N' Roses, and because we had a eight years of gap, mm. <laughs> we had eight years of gap, and that actually made me for me to reach to all these eighties uh, music, seventies, sixties, and all that. My father was more into Kenny Rogers, Inglebird Humperdinck, and uh, say Jim Reeves and all that stuff. And at the same time, some a bit of Clarence, Satul Adhikari, Milton Malarchi and all that, those sort of stuff also. So, uh, when it comes to music, I always had that perspective towards that, it, the, 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 I kind of, okay, like the music should be uh, rich and it should be powerful and it should give a message to the audience. So, it, I always had that sort of a perspective. So, uh, well, uh, when it comes to that level, I think most of my influences came from my father and my brother listening to, you know, Guns N' Roses, Def Leppard and all that. That's why I'm more of a, though I was a 90s porn kid, I'm more of into stuff into 80s and 70s and 60s stuff. All right. So, uh, yeah, talking about my school days, I, uh, I was part of, uh, I think like most of these, uh, I mean, a lot of, I mean, a lot of schools had this uh, thing called intra club. Mm. Eric, <laughs> you know how much sacrifice you need to do for those th- sort of things. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, one time, uh, this, this is the most uh, funniest thing and the most uh, uh, thing that I remember. Uh, we were, I mean, I was part of the intra club from 2007. Uh, Five, six, wage. All right. I think I was in the grade, uh, grade eight. I was in grade eight, and uh, our batch we needed to organize a cultural event. Right? And just two days before, one of our main sponsors uh, said that uh, they are backing up from sponsoring. Right. All right. So, but we did was thing. Ekale. I mean, like back in the days, where advertisements costs were around, you know. 10,000 bucks, 800 bucks. Those are, those are the sponsorship levels. Right. One time I remember, like, we were only two days before the, uh, the event. My, one of my two, me and one of my two friends, we said, Machan, we are going to face a huge shit. Uh, we have invited all the schools also around all the Sri Lanka and uh, we're going to face a huge shit. So why don't we just, you know, uh, do something about this? So I remember, like, I think uh, it was holidays. Uh, we got down from golf face. Sorry? We walked up to Vallavakta looking for advertisements. Mm. From golf face to Vallavakta, we walked. I mean, we had a lot of advertisements. So that was that insane. I mean, uh, I always had that perspective to us if you're going to do something you need to properly do it either you back off mm. that's one thing i always learned from all those years and whatnot so uh one thing chanaya that uh, from those school days whatever the things i did it came uh, it came in handy i mean uh, like all these extracurricular activities you know being in interact club and uh, being a part of all these organizing stuff all that it came it came in very much handy and uh, after that i think i after i left school i joined uh, apit and while i was in apit i worked for red bull i was one of the student brand managers so i learned a lot from there as well because we always had to work with the you know we work, we had to work with the overseas crowd you know the when i remember i was part of when uh, we bought down the first uh, the formula vehicle uh, to the F1, uh, the race car to Sri Lanka. That was the uh, the last night race we had in Sri Lanka. So we had to, you know, communicate with the team from Renault and everything. So it's a it's a bit of a see. It was a bit of a roller coaster ride for me for me to learn. And it has still it's being a learning curve for me, and still we are learning. I I always believe when it comes to a being on a certain uh, say. Uh, a creative platform, you're always being a student behind it. You're always learning something new. You, something always being created. You're always creating something. And uh, that's how I basically got in. And basically how Story Brothers came into the scene was uh, 
of my father was had a bit of a he had a business so basically once me and my brother took over we opened a new path uh, for events for basically for original talent so that's how basically surya brothers was born yeah. and uh, so i think from uh, we initiated it on 2013 we started doing concerts i mean like our own stuff i've been i was doing concerts from keshan i think you must be knowing keshan also Keshan Vijay Sekara, who did Maelstrom. I was part of with Keshan at AWN Radio. And then uh, uh, I was doing gigs with uh, Sean as well. And after that, uh, once we actually came into the scene, uh, we started bringing back Rock Saturdays and all the stuff. So that's how basically Surya Brothers came into the scene, uh, started doing from 2018 onwards. Hmm. The, rock saturdays and all that so that's how we build up and things are going pretty much all right i think nothing to complain on that uh well talking speaking about my childhood how i came into the music business was uh, after i left school while i was in uh, adapted i started my own band that was the that i mean i like, ultimately became the the first uh, glam metal band okay <laughs> Yeah, it's the first middle band, the tight bands and the little, <laughs> and all that. And it's a, it it it's it's like this. Like we always wanted to, uh, I always wanted to bring that back, to bring that glory days because you know that heavy metal became so commercial during the eighties. Right, it became so commercial during the eighties. I wanted to bring that back and how it will, uh, like how it will react to the situations right now. Yeah. So uh, that's how I basically, and I was a, I was in another doom metal band as well called Karkosa. Uh, we played in Gampa and uh, played in Nigambo as well. And uh, and my third, the final project was uh, a stoner band called Stone Therapy. We were able to record, not record actually, we were able to create like few originals and we took part on the first uh, stoner concert. Uh, that happened on uh, 2018 yeah somewhere on 2018 17 okay yeah so that's how my journey was with music but then again like see uh, just uh, like i was like when you became when you become a certain part of an organization uh, yeah mm. one thing i always uh, remember was one thing i always learned was that the uh, when you you can't do two things number one mm. or you need to manage yourself and number two uh, i wanted to give that constant uh, see you have to have you have to make sure that band is moving forward so uh, we had like when we most in most of the projects that i worked with we had this issue like you know people come and going you know or uh, <laughs> a set of people working towards it and another set of people who are just packing up just you know following the train mm. okay so uh i wanted to be the back end to control and to make sure that band is moving that was one motive of surya brothers that's why we recently uh, we expanded our uh, the the avenues i mean the levels of surya brothers into i mean find of this year we are going to open up we are going to launch surya brothers records so right now uh, two bands have signed up to us uh, one which is called thursday jam an alternative thrash band and one which was uh, silence of love which is the glam metal band right uh, apart from the live concerts apart from that we always believe there's more than that you know like managing an artist and uh, giving them the knowledge what they deserve and giving them the opportunities they deserve it could be overseas it could be locally it could be within the circle and uh, financially helping them on from the possible ways from the i mean the ways that you could possibly go uh see uh, we were able to create that level as well i mean uh, that's how we expanded ourselves and yeah that's how, that's the story of me coming into the scene and i actually came into the heavy metal and the rock scene i think on the time of 
say I was there from 2009, seven or okay? I was very small mm. because uh, I think one of my cousins were, were friends with uh, Whirlwind and my brother was also going to Rock Saturdays and all that. I was very small. <laughs> I was able to see Paranoid Earthling and Tapas on stage on and uh, Stigmata and uh, Independent Square. I was very small. I, I don't remember shit. I was also going, um, I mean, like one time I was very like, see, there were, there were things in when it comes to my place. I mean, at home also, you, you were able to go to a certain place if you only study only, if you do your homework only. So <laughs> I was able to finish off my shit and just go to these sort of things and just to experience these sort of levels. So uh, the most of the times I was, I went with my brother uh, or as my cousins or whatnot. So that's how things got into me, I mean, properly planted. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, that, that was my journey towards music and uh, how Surya Brothers came into the scene and things were, yeah. Yeah, I really, uh, so I saw this, uh, the post that you do this, uh, remember the trend of say, posting a performance photo every day. So I, I see you all this uh, with the tiger pants. And the I, I really didn't want to do that. But at the end of the day, it was it, it, at the end of the day, because me Chennai, it gave certain exposure. Also that, you know, okay, I said, right, why not? Why, why not I do that? So yeah, yeah, the tiger pants, yes. <laughs> so we, yeah, I was actually quite amazed because uh, because I know that you're kind of younger and then I, I, I sort of seeing this, uh, you're interested in AOR music and you know, and all the glam and then so, uh, because uh, I used to guest, uh, guest host on some, one of the shows here called Adults Only Radio. So we mostly oh. play that type of Oh yeah, you music. sent that to me. Dan. Yeah, That's so, good, huh? uh, yeah, so uh, for last couple of years, I've been actually very active in that uh, that side of music because I've been collecting mm. I, because mostly I want to play in the radio so I, I kind of got in, got back to that style of music like Poison, okay. Motley Crue. Um, so what are your <laughs> what are your kind of favorite bands on that genre? Uh, say uh, okay when it comes to okay I'm a more of a person who was influenced with as I told you earlier like with 80s 70s and the mid 90s 90s now here and there not mainly but uh, i listen to everything not that i don't but i give my more preference and my more interest towards uh, 80s music and 70s mm, mainly uh, 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 musicians like dokken hari uh, i'm i'll be honest you not very much of a poison fan but i do listen to poison right. i do I actually do like I respect those guys what those guys bought into the 80s scene and how those guys basically commercialized the whole 80s heavy metal music right how they how they became a part of MTV being a huge uh, ruckus and how they actually bought the scene so yeah. Twist Sister, Dokken and Van Halen, Guns N' Roses, Kiss and a uh, lot of uh, uh, White Snake and uh, C Cinderella, Jackal, and all that. I, I mean, uh, it just kept on going. I normally like uh, stay up late nights and just research on all those uh, genres, mm. which is between genres like shock rock, glam rock, and uh, theatrical. There are theatrical experiences when it comes to Kiss and Motley Crue, and how they actually. When it comes to their concerts, how they staged up all these pyros and everything, that's actually one thing that when you research on all those small, small stuff, you can actually get real good ideas like how you convert it into nowadays scenario. <laughs> you get what I'm trying to say? Because back in the day, I mean, uh, the time of late uh, mid 80s, 85, 89, there was a huge movement. Mm. When it to the glam metal and the hair metal scene, a proper hair, can a proper heavy metal. You can a, say, uh, okay, Judas Priest, all right, and Motorhead. Those uh, bands, I mean, 
are straight edge heavy metal and all the speed metal bands like riot and all that those uh, bands have that are uh, more uh, what do you call that uh, texture and that sound that every person can in you know, a patas gala it goes into their heads and it gets implanted and they kept on listening i mean even when you go inside a vehicle or even if you're i don't know uh, doing something at home or anything like that you were able to listen to that music see it kept on going and and we are still listening mm. so that's how uh, it, it had that uh, uh, that that uh, weight to carry out for generations to generations to generations it still has that so uh, one thing uh, bands like judas priest motorhead iron maiden and uh, um, uh, artists like johnny cash and all those i was mainly influenced with those their lyrical lyrical ideas and how van halen came into the scene how from van halen uh, quiet riot and uh, bands like uh, say uh, steel panther because those guys were really uh, active uh, during the 80s and had a huge uh, uh break in between the 90s and then again i think on 2002 or three those guys came back to the scene as i remember so uh yeah likewise uh, my influences mostly on 80s music i do listen to 90s stuff as well mm. especially the what the local guys are doing our bands like stigs whirlwind genocide shrines paranoid earthling independent square uh, so, uh all these extreme bands uh, when it comes to uh, dispute manifestator disty uh, serpents of thirst and uh, all these noise uh, projects like conflict and all that so those guys are giving a lot of good text and a lot of things are coming out i mean during the lockdown this uh, period as well there have been a lot of uh, original stuff are coming out from our local guys so that was one thing happen really good so if you okay when it comes to influencing uh, music i was most influenced with this glamel stuff right thing also talking about uh, that thing uh, it, for me it really for us when when we came when we came to the bank or lasul gaze or that was the name of the band sorry <laughs> so uh, it was really for art for us to find people who are influenced with that type of music that was one thing i was very much uh, uh, say uh, got into trouble with finding musicians who's in the influence of listening to poison cinderella and uh, twisted sister and all that stuff so uh, but time to come we were able to i think we played a lot of pub gigs r and r manchester <laughs> and all that we played uh, i need to give a shout out to kanish kapiris you know for giving us that opportunity and people like shan and all that because shan had his own concept called uh, rock and roll mm. and all that. so uh, i we played at that and so that's how my uh, the band journey began but uh, yeah, at the end of the day uh, there comes a time that uh, people change their certain certain uh, paths now basically i there there had been a time that i wanted to keep on going with the band but there are set of people who just want to lay back and follow the trail right so that's one reason the band scenario for me that didn't work out properly so i thought when i am getting so much of opportunities and what not why won't i stage that why won't i give that opportunity for other local bands that's how okay. it will be the same so uh, i think we quite uh, i remember hearing about surya brothers for the first time i think probably mm-hmm. a post from yasmin probably yasmin or somebody and then first yes. i i got i actually got kind of confused because i i remember the surya surya records that which used to be in the <laughs> 70s and yes. I, because i actually collect some of the surya stuff mm. like the, the moonstones and, and everything ne right? yeah moonstones golden chimes and, and all that yeah. so i i i have actually visited that place also before when i was in in sri lanka i went to the place i bought some of the records from them itself so i early first i thought wow is surya records coming back but then i realized it's actually a different uh, a different yeah. surya right s u r i y a not yeah S-O-R-I-Y-A. because uh, me <laughs> people had that confusion cuz uh, 
we we go as uh, Surya, S U R I Y A, where the Surya records goes as S W O R I Y A. Yeah. That's that's Vikrama Surya, and our same our surname goes as Surya Peruma. Peruma. Okay. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so, confused. Yeah. So, what, what? How did you guys started? So, mo, you started as an event place. So, what? what no. The place? No. 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 Basically, yeah, we are not a full-on, uh, say, event organization company. All right. We do our imports and exports, and we do have our rental services and all that stuff as well. Right. All right. And uh, we do bring down uh, Funkos to Sri Lanka. And uh, that's one one of our cousins. Uh, he's the one who does uh, the uh, the geek, uh, say the collective uh, collectibles in Sri Lanka called collectic. Yeah, you have know? you have you seen my Funko collection? Yes. <laughs> Why not? I have I have Vince Neil and uh, Axel Rose and uh, the set of Motley Crew and uh, uh, Slash and Kirk Hammond. Yeah, I actually don't have space anymore. <laughs> hey, that's that's that that's addictive, man. That's very much addictive. Once you get into because you have a wide range from Funkos, right? From each and every, from TV series to from movies to from bands to solo artists to from all these uh, uh, obscure characters. Even you get, I think, from uh, me, 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 My Little Pony as well, right? Yeah, anything, anything. Actually, their their anything. motto their motto is everybody's fan of any, every, anything or something, right? <laughs> Everyone is a fan of something. something I'm like a fan that. of uh, I'm a fan of uh, Lego as well, and uh, Hot Wheels. But Hot Wheels is like a drug gumbo. <laughs> collecting that it it never ends. I mean, you get the bloody uh, what do you call that? The if you buy a certain vehicle and you get that alternative vehicle as well. Uh. And that in another year, they bloody come up with another say of the same thing, and you get holy shit! I haven't collected this thing. I need to buy that also, and it keeps on going, keeps on going. So, uh, I'm a huge Marvel fan, Hare? full on Marvel fan, a full on Wolverine fan. So, uh, like those saw all those sort of came from my brother and from my cousins because these days, I was the youngest out of everyone. <laughs> I was the youngest out of everyone, so these guys used to collect. I think this uh, toy box, uh, toy. These are toy box, uh, sky box, sky box uh, trading cards from uh, like the classic Marvel, and uh, then what do you call all these uh, toy these figures from Spider Man to Wolverine to Carnage to Daredevil to Hulk and all of that stuff. So. Then I I also started collecting. That's how basically my uh, the 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 creative aspire started to work out. Right. You know uh, I used to draw and all these comics and whatnot. Uh, things started to work out for me in that way. So I think that might have been the reason. So basically talking about Surya Brothers uh, Chennai, we are not a full on event planning organization. We do our imports and exports and uh, the rental services as well. Mm. And when organizing and we and number one fact is we do our own stuff we do our own concept ideas we don't do third party uh, events or we don't just you know we don't there had been times that people asked us to do certain events and whatnot we don't do like that right. and we don't actually we do our own concepts and that's how basically the things are uh, working for us so uh, yeah Surya Brothers uh, now we are expanding for next year as Surya Brothers records that as well, we are going to launch that. And inside that, it's just not only recording and producing and lab, not at, not only as a labor, artist management, uh, nurturing the artist and giving the proper knowledge mm. and uh, giving them the opportunities overseas, making them, you know, making them the name and uh, uh, giving them, making them a, a way to get the revenues and everything for the band. So it's just not only recording and stuff. It's basically the whole package so you guys organize this acoustic what is that acoustic saturdays uh, that is uh, ah, okay that's a good thing I mean. <laughs> okay we started off uh, doing rock saturday okay how rock saturday started was i'll tell you uh okay when i was working with keshan at aw and i think on the time of uh, 2012 13 uh, 14 okay mm. uh, 
we uh, basically we were talking about Rock Saturday. All right. I was also thinking to myself, damn, it would have been really great to see Rock Saturday back on, you know, the, from the times and all that, from the yeah. times that uh, stopped, I think from 2003 to 4, things stopped, stopped coming into, from in terms of finances and all the stuff, it got stopped because Rock Saturday was a proper underground gathering. Yeah. And was yeah. like a full, like a <laughs> I used fiesta. To go- yeah, I used to go all the way from Nigambo <laughs> actually to Roxanne. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been fun. Oh. <laughs> I mean, back in the days, uh, you didn't also get all these highways and everything. Also, Nambo, how the traffic could have been. I mean, yeah, so we all, that something, Chandra, we always had, we always to admire, we always had that. Hardcore uh, fan base, you know, no matter what, coming to the concert, even by collecting that single cent from your parents or from you know, or a mukakkari vikunalari machangara, I know the concert ticket, I know ticket taken, I need to buy this shit somehow. But then all the ticket could have been sold out. Yeah, I never enough. I need to sell this shit and get the ticket somehow. So we always had that uh, see uh, that hardcore fan base. I mean, the rock and heavy metal at any country and anywhere. You get that hardcore fan base. That's why things are moving still. See, uh, it's not a, it's not always a straight line for any industry. You know? mm. It's like a up and down scenario for everything. So, uh, but certain entities for certain uh, things like for the genre of heavy metal and rock and roll, it, that that line was always strong. There were there are there were no breaks. There were no because. They had always something for us to uh, inspire with. You know, the old bands, the le- legacies still live on. From bands like Metallica to uh, Iron Maiden to Priest to Sabbath. Those guys still live on. I mean, those, their music still live on. But if you listen to a pop artist, it's just one or two days. He's disappeared. So... Uh, what I really liked about the Rock Saturday, because... Uh, of course, you had all the new bands coming up, Stigmata, mm. Whirlwind, Paranoid. We could see all these bands from different cities coming up and playing. And then we also was able to see like Tilak Dyers, Prasanna from Cancer. They had this uh, rock Saturday jam, ne? Yeah, so they, they, they used to play and Tapas. That's ah, like yes. uh, one of the craziest bands I've seen, Tapas. Yeah, <laughs> man. I, I, I really wanted to bring those guys back. But like all those three guys are like all over the country, oh. uh, Palu and uh, Raju and Vega and all that. So, uh, yeah. So talking about bringing back Rock Saturday, when me and Kishan was talking about it, I think Kishan was the first person in Sri Lanka. I still remember, I, I always remember him. Uh, bless him, bless his soul. Uh, Kishan was the first person to bring down uh, four international, five international acts to Sri Lanka at once. That was the Maelstrom, mm. which uh, held at uh, Bihar Mahadevi Amphitheater. All right. He was able to bring down uh, Zadani. He was the first uh, drum and bass artist that came to Sri Lanka. All right. Uh, he was more off into heavy metal music and he, you know, like remixed into drum and bass technology and tried to put it up. And Seven Thorns, bands like Seven Thorns from, uh, was it Venezuela? No. Seven Thorns from Denmark and uh, Stygian Asen from, uh, what's the country I can't remember. So Stygian Asen, the Demonic Resurrection from India and uh, there was another, uh, Court of Arms from Dubai. And uh, yeah, so he, he was one of those first people to bring down uh, four acts at once. Even before that, I think uh, uh, Rotting Christ came in. Seen, uh, Rotting Christ came to Sri Lanka, but that was the first time we were able to see four acts at once in Sri Lanka. So uh, after that, uh, after that, I think on 2000, that, that happened at 2013, I think. Uh, yeah, so uh, after that, I left. Yeah, I, was, I, I worked with him uh, at a, his uh, radio. He had his own radio station called, an online radio station called AW Radio. Right. That used to play on 
Vimithil and Rock and Roll. That was the only channel. I, I mean, uh, TNL got, uh, certain channels got weighed off by playing all these. You know, they didn't actually stick to their roots. I'll be honest to you. But yeah. uh, here, Keshan placing the AWM radio actually did something good because that played 24-7 heavy metal and rock and roll. Huh? Nothing. No, no hanky-panky stuff. Straight up uh, heavy metal and rock and roll. That's it. So, one thing, once I left uh, AWN, uh, that's how basically Surya Brothers came into the scene. Uh, we officially went to uh, uh, Mr. Ajit and we got the procedures done and that's how basically we were able to have uh, Rock Saturday. So Rock Saturday, we were able to stage it for the first time. It was on 2018, May. And we had it at uh, here, uh, Dutch Burger Union. So Marlon spoke to us. Marlon was the old uh, rock DJs back in the day. Right. So and Jansen and uh, all those people were also involved and Prayera Brothers also came in. I mean, uh, World Wind played, bands like Nefertum, a lot of acts. It was, uh, I think, uh, 10 acts on that day, including from started with uh, two uh, acoustic sets and from there onwards, uh, bands like Nefertum, uh, World Wind, Salvage, a uh, lot of bands played. And... Uh, Special moments, uh, to, on 2018, we were able to have uh, three rock Saturdays. One, two, three. Because things have changed uh, by the time. Technology has evolved, things have evolved. There had been there, there had more ways for people to be entertained with and everything. So we wanted to uh, see how, because you remember rock Saturday happened once a month. Once every end of the last Saturday, Rock Saturday took place. Right. So we wanted to see how that thing will work out with the current aspects. Well, uh, we didn't want to have it once a month. So what we did was we had it at on the first go, which was May. And after that, we had it at uh, July, as I remember. And then again, that was Rock Saturday 2. Uh, special thing to talk about Rock Saturday 2 was we were able to open Women's International again. Because Women's International was like the main place, right? When it comes to that and the 80s club. Right. And the NCC. Sorry? Oh. So, uh, we were able to, because, see, a uh, lot of venues in Sri Lanka, when you put out the words rock and heavy metal, they always like, oh, shit, okay. Are you guys going to vandalize the place? No. <laughs> that That's how, that's how sort of a thing they got. But honestly, I, I went up as like full official Kitagahala. Serious thing, we are going to have a rock concert. Uh, this is how things need to work out. Uh, they, I was very surprised. They actually gave the place. Because uh, once uh, at the concert that happened during the time of uh, 2013 or 12, these guys closed the doors for a lot of concerts. I think then again, I think uh, we were able to open it up for 2018 and uh, carried out Rock Saturday 2 over there. And uh, that was the time after I think uh, so many years uh, again, Stigmata started to play at Rock Saturdays. And uh, that was the first time I, uh, a band from Ratnapura came. Wow. It's called uh, Fallen Insanity. It's a crazy extreme metal band. Uh, pretty, much, I mean, like, pretty insane. So that was the first time a, a band came from Ratnapura. So that was the speciality behind uh, Rock Saturday Two. Uh, three was again happened on September. Uh, band from uh, Silence. That was the first time Silence of Loud played in Colombo. <laughs> I mean, those guys started playing all Motley Crew, Home Sweet, Tomui, Skid Row, 18 and Life and all that stuff. I want to say, I was like, whoa, shit. <laughs> I was like doing the same shit that we did, I used to do like back in the day. I was like, damn, these guys, I need to talk to them and all that. So that's how I actually got to know. Uh, that's how basically Candy, I mean, apart from Paranoid Earth Team, kept their legacy. A lot of younger bands started to perform again from Candy from that moment onwards. I mean, uh, Candy had a huge scene. I mean, from bands like uh, Paranoid Earthling, Tapas, 
to there had been bands like ancient curse obsidious recently also they are the may they this certain uh, band called senkadagala they released an ep so there had been huge scene but uh ara spark ekak enna gatta again when these guys performed at rock saturday i mean it was a new act i mean there had been no uh, glam metal sort of uh, american hard rock sort of an act that came from candy so ara there was a spark mm. so uh, that was one thing and uh, of uh, rock saturday 3 uh, the other scenario was uh, Suri Brothers, uh, one of our special moments where we were able to uh, receive uh, the first uh, Wakan Metal battle. We were able to, we were actually, I, I mean, uh, receive the license to have and control the the Wakan Metal battle over here. Right. Uh, thanks to uh, Sohan and uh, Salman and all those people. So. Uh, that was one thing and uh, from their moment onwards lot of things started to boom up on the first uh, wakan metal battle uh, it was stigmata mass damnation uh, tarnai deathling abyss and new rock pussy those were the five bands and uh, i actually did not believe so that uh, was a different that was that was held as a separate gig not that was uh, that was held as a separate gig uh, because uh, at that time uh, we didn't have the license to have uh, we didn't have the actually we didn't have the license to have uh, colombo panna and colombo panna happened in uh, 2011 and once that happened only uh, on 2019 uh, doc melinda came and spoke to me to uh, why don't you uh, take it on uh, koa so uh, that's how koa happened so we wanted to have wakan metal battle inside that so it becomes a pretty big thing right So oh, on 2018, uh, Mass Damnation was able to go to Goa, Bangalore, Panna, and to perform in front of a 2,000 plus crowd. That was a good thing. And uh, on 2019, Disti was able to uh, Disti was Disti got selected, but unfortunately, this guy this year they didn't have the Goa. Right. And uh, quite a challenging journey. Quite a challenging journey for us. Uh, very enjoyable also because it's good to see a lot of bands are performing, a lot of new acts are performing, and uh, I need to say from your hometown that was the first time uh, on acoustic Saturday uh, uh, a band from Nigambo came in. <laughs> Two bands from Nigambo, uh, uh, Genetic Fallacy, and uh, after he said. but uh, that was uh, right after easter attacks uh, last year and that was the third acoustic saturday uh, right before the fourth uh, rock saturday last year mm. so they those guys gave a really good performance and uh, on fourth rock saturday the speciality was we were able to have it in at crn fc and you want crowd uh, it was 800 plus 800 plus crowd there yeah one thing uh, uh, tickets got all sold out within the first five bands were playing and uh, other special thing is that was the like after a very long time harnai dirtling and berlin sticks played on one stage like after so many years and another special reason was that was the kick we had the second band from ratnapura debuted <laughs> it was a alternative uh, screamo band very much of you know uh, with a pearl jam vibe you can imagine with a pearl jam vibe when you are screaming <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that was that and uh, yeah quite a challenging not i'm not going to say no because uh, we adhere to the government rules we normally go through all these aspects it's very challenging it's not mm-hmm. easy It's really not easy to have a concert in Sri Lanka. <laughs> not that it, it will be very. It might have been easy for a children's party, but not a rock concert or a heavy metal concert. But once you get to know certain the legalities and how things will work out, it's easy for you to work it out. Then no one can't say you can't do shit or anything like that because you're actually adhering to the government rules and the regulations. Yeah. <laughs> so who who were who were the headliner for the Colombo opening? it was uh, cryptos from india from india 
super band ah me it was more of a 80s uh, vibe crash band uh, they had bit of uh, very very well well very much influenced with judas priest i would say right like judas priest <laughs> like super band they they gave a like a blasting performance and uh, we were able to have that uh, otters and uh, the guest bands were mass damnation uh, fahrenheit earthling whirlwind sticks and uh, sorry whirlwind and uh, genocide shrines right those uh, four acts and the indian act yeah so, so this, yeah this when you said actually we were yeah this year actually we were planning to have a lot more other stuff as well but <laughs> then <laughs> so uh when you said back and metal battle so uh there was also uh last year filipino mm. band the valley of chrome they were able to mm. play in backam that was the first filipino band to actually play oh, and, okay and then they are, i think they are trying to play, bring the backam battle to here as well uh, but yeah supposed to happen this year but now it's probably will be next year mm. um now what are the bands so early early days of the metal scene in sri lanka it was more of uh, some bands in colombo and then some bands in kandy maybe like one or two kandy bands like paranoid and, and there were like a uh, few bands so now it seems like there's so many bands from different places right <laughs> uh oh ambo there are bands from uh, there are now actually there's there i would i would not say bands but there's actually now talent i mean musicians i would say bands yes i i mean that will be the proper way to put it uh, yeah. there are bands coming from Nigambo bands from Gampaha lot of uh, older bands are coming uh, from Bandaravela B- bands were like uh, bloodline and everything uh, channel so uh, stuff coming out from Anuradhapura are i recently uh, uh, i mean uh, discovered that there are stuff coming out from Jaffna as well wow and uh, bands are from Kurunagal and these again like uh, they have they are they are they are they are actually they kept on going but again they are actually rising up to the scene and uh, nigambo i mean shit is insane now <laughs> i mean, actually now younger acts i mean all these kids uh experimenting with their bands and with their music and with their sound and, and that's actually a good thing i would say yeah i yeah i was actually surprised one of my filipino friends posted mm-hmm. uh, posted a band uh, like what he was listening to when i actually checked the band it's uh, it's actually sri lankan because i think there's a lot <laughs> of this uh, black metal like you know what chaturanga fonseca was doing and all this yes. there was, there's a lot of this uh, black metal bands in sri lanka as well right there's there's a, a huge of- black metal i mean that uh, the whole militia and that whole uh, army there's a equal amount from colombo and at the same time there's a equal amount from gampa as well mm. you that uh, the 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 people who are listening to black metal and people who are listening to rock and roll i mean now i would say chana there are way, i mean the when it comes to the sub genres of rock and heavy metal it's very much expanded i mean you get glam metal you get shock rock and yeah. you get black metal acts you get prog acts and you get thrash acts i mean what 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 else uh, you want to see i mean at the end of the day you get everything mm. so apart from uh, alice cooper spitting blood <laughs> they... <laughs> so that's the thing i mean uh, it's very much good thing to see a lot of bands and a lot of musicians are coming up with their own sound experimenting a lot of i get to know a lot of people from whatsapp and everything and saying that they are coming up with this sort of concept and what whatever the projects that those guys are doing it's it's really a good thing because from surya brothers from our side it's like uh, staging a platform for them for a live concert it doesn't end from over there mm. it it goes from you know as i told you uh, nurturing an artist uh, supporting them with uh, financial matters it's just not from like you know uh, 
putting a Facebook like or a share or anything like that. It just doesn't give shit. Yeah. So it goes uh, on and on. So uh, there's there's more to it. There's more to it when it comes to an organization. I know. I think I you know that as well. I mean, uh, it's it's a huge responsibility. So it's all good. It's all good. I mean, it's very happy to see even during the lockdowns also our guys have been working. Uh, uh, towards originals, I mean, there have been a lot of stuff from, I need to give a shout out for these man sticks, uh, genetic fallacy, fair, silence of cloud, man till God, Shehara, and uh, uh, Sacrament, uh, Mass Damnation, all those bands, and uh, uh, the projects that has been conducted by Raban Command, and uh, entities like that. I mean, a lot of projects have been coming up mm. during down period as well. So I was actually thinking to myself, though the lockdown has taken place, there's no uh, barrier for you being creative. See, it's just a matter of you're getting time to yourself and, you know, sit on a certain place, start being creative. I mean, that's, that's about it. I mean, that's how actually things are now in Sri Lanka when it comes to bands and everything. I mean, lot of uh, new bands are coming up. I mean, in future, you'll be able to see even more uh, uh, huge thrash acts and everything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I remember you, uh, Surya Brothers, hosted uh, recently uh, of a Zoom, uh, you know, a, a web conference, like, yes. Yeah, you ho held a conference which you had like mm. everyone in the industry was there, right? So, uh, so, What's the message out of that panel coming up? What, what the the end result was actually see, uh, you know that when it comes to the Sri Lankan uh, entertainment, uh, okay, if you it comes down to the Sri Lankan showbiz, uh, it's what very much uh, say it's it's a it's a roller coaster ride always. I mean, there are certain acts, there are certain parties who will work very much biased to themselves. At the same time, there are certain set of musicians who will work their ass off to bring certain things along with the organizers, from the promoters to label holders to everything. And uh, yes, talking about that conference, it actually, uh, one thing it proved the unity when it comes to our musicians. The, when it comes to the promoters, to organizers, to musicians and uh, people from all the areas, it showed uh, that, you know, no matter what, we are still in this together. It's, it's whatever the shit happens, it happens for everyone. You know, Corona or Dengue or HIV AIDS or whatever the farms over here, it happens to everyone. Right. So that, that was one, one thing. And uh, other thing was that we were able to come up with. Uh, it was more of a brainstorming session as well. I mean, it, uh, you know, figuring out all the government regulations. I mean, there are crazy regulations. There. Crazy regulations. I mean, at, at one point, there was a clause that you can only have four people on a stage with a meter distance from each other. So just imagine four people dancing, how crazy it would look. Yeah. That, that's <laughs> a, and at the end of the day, I mean, there are certain things that would not work with a rock and heavy metal concert. Example, this uh, new, the certain trend called uh, driving concerts that, that would not work with a rock and heavy metal uh, sort of a culture. Right. See, always about when it comes to live concert, it's always about from musician to the fan, it's exchanging energy, right? It's all about the communication and how you carry forward your act. It has to be proper. I mean, not a single, uh, in, a, in a driving concert, you will be able to see that. I mean, from inside the vehicle, just imagine your head banging, how yeah. crazy it look. Your head will just go and uh, slam on the steering wheel and it will come back and it will look insane. All right? Yeah. So, uh, one thing that, uh, we were able to figure out how we're going to move forward as a set of people, as a group of people and uh, how we are going to uh, basically are we going to wait until the government gives the green light 
Are we going to uh, stick for our old roots? Or are we going to accept the new normal? See, so those were the things. But actually at the very end, we were able to figure out uh, that no matter what, from which way is possible, we are going to wait until uh, everything ends and comes to a clear point where we are going to request as a bunch from the government that uh, how things are going to work for us. Mm. Because uh, music is music at the end of the day, right? No matter what culture you're from, no matter what genre that you're following, no matter what, uh, say, is it, is, it, is it an extreme act or is it a very much of a mellow act or what sort of a thing? Music is music at the end of the day. You're giving a certain message and you're building a culture. Yeah, so uh, actually from the May, the very end of that discussion, we were able to come up with and we were able to stay more updated with the government regulations and to keep on go with this uh, certain situation because we have to keep on go, right? And uh, whatever the hell that comes, because at the end of the day, I believe uh, there has to be some way for us to cater to the audience, for us to keep these things going. Yeah. So, I mean, that was uh, the bottom line and from, from that conference, what happened? Yeah, I mean, uh, of course, you have to be, you have to consider the safety and health and mm. everything, but there's no point of living without music, right? Because... Yeah, yeah true, true, true. There has to be some right? way. Yeah, I so mean, at the end of the day, it of was... <laughs> uh, because I saw from certain, certain concerts also, those guys are having... It's a full-on live session, right? But uh, when it comes to Sri Lanka, China, yeah, I mean, those are all European countries, right? Those guys have whatever the things, I mean, with the, with the whole uh, resources and everything, these guys have it 24-7. I, I would say that when it comes to a lot of European countries, apart from US, countries like uh, Germany and all those, UK and all those, they have their thing. I mean, they always had it. That's where the thing started off from UK to States, from the new wave of British heavy metal to everything. These guys still have that culture. Mm. So that culture was bought by a lot of senior bands over here, like uh, Independent Square to uh, Rattlesnakes yeah. to uh, uh, Sticks to all that. So we had to build it, right? It's not something that we came up with. We had yeah. to build that culture over here. So for us to keep on going, we have to give that extra me <laughs> our effort for that. <laughs> you are uh, overnight, we can't come up with an idea. Okay, we have to go live and present a concert during the lock lockdowns. Because one thing for the people, well, see, you know that countries like over here, and the audiences are very judgmental, right? And when you're catering something, you need to think twice, think four times. Even like you need to go to that depths to their mentality to think how are how how things are going to take place, Kienega. No. So uh, see, overnight a live concert would not work, but there are possibilities that might work, you know, from proper planning and everything. But just because you are giving a heavy metal or a rock and roll live concert from social media, that energy won't be the same, Chan. No, it's not. Because it's I, not. I try to watch a couple of them. I probably like <laughs> enjoy it maybe just like one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's the thing. So yeah, uh, really, uh, it's not really. It, 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 it became like, yeah, uh, it's, I might just watch a YouTube video of Metallica. Yeah. Or, which you can do anytime you want, right? So exactly, it's, it's not, it's not like you have to go live that particular time. So it's a uh, one thing that you had on that panel. You had Misha from Worldwind. Mm. Uh, I also had him on my last uh, yes. episode. Yes, I'm waiting for out. the video. Yeah, it's supposed to come out. <laughs> I mean, for me, from 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 those early bands, I think Worldwind has been like one of the most. Uh, underrated band and then they they are most you can't, you, you, most can't 
you can't what? say underrated now cha- now channa yeah those guys are like no I'll, I'll be honest to you mm-hmm. you know the big uh, five acts in sri lanka are sticks tanai der thing worldly genocide shrine and uh, may uh, uh, sticks pranay der thing worldly genocide shrines and mass damnation and mm-hmm. then it comes like dish tea and all that also yeah I like the big acts and senior acts like you know our young people are looking up to okay there are then there are bands like dispute you remember there had been a band called manifestator no i don't i i didn't Uncle come across band called, but what i am saying is uh, whirlwind uh, i mean to me when i listen to their music i know you also share a lot of lot of their videos because it's mm. really i think they should be even bigger right <laughs> <laughs> yeah of course that's that's one thing we always wanted to make sure when it comes to the local acts uh, chennaiya they shouldn't be like you know are uh, stuck in sri lanka you know they should be you know all over the world when it comes to all that uh these from bands like whirlwind to paranoid to sticks to genocide to uh to mass to tishti to everything all the bands all the talent deserves that due respect and that due uh, this uh, whatever the values that they need to be received mm. but i always say local talent and originality has to keep, has to be kept alive then only that you know that country can come to a certain place when it comes to their own local thing see india what these guys are doing with their local talent it's insane right i mean that's their talent they have come up with their own ideas and certain things like that so countries like all the southeast asian countries to the european countries and all the asian countries it's just amazing what do, what people are doing with the originality so that's what from surya brothers also we are keep on giving and at the same time uh, we made sure rock saturday has to have a bit of a commercial appeal as well mm. then because uh, we made sure that uh, it go it, it it's being telecasted in high tv and uh, if up that that actually came uh, on during 2019 uh, these guys joined hand with us so after every show that's being telecasted on uh, tv so from acoustic saturdays to rock saturdays and everything and at the same time there's uh, yasmin from disabled doctor uk giving her superb uh, support as always with the whole uh, live streaming and all the from all the uh, all the online platforms mm. so uh, there are a lot of things that comes into place when it comes to originality it's just not only one thing chanaya i mean yeah. uh, as i told you earlier also it just not only stops from providing a platform to perform it's just one time are you you are you are playing and you are getting paid and you are going home but what's the point if if there's nothing from that entity who provided that platform so that's yeah. what we believe in so whatever the local talent is there it should go even more further distance in terms of uh, sending their message to the masses so that's one thing we always believe in yeah so one thing uh, pubudu is that of course we need to have the local local mm. bands uh, local industry but one thing that fuels the fans of any country is the international bands coming to their country right the famous bands so what needs to happen in sri lanka so that there's there more international acts will come to sri i lanka? think uh, i think basically uh, i would say the government has to be aware of what we are doing i mean uh, government is aware because natang me i mean it would have been really easy to put up a concert and just put publicize on facebook and the next day we are putting up a live concert with uh, 200 300 people government is aware of what we are doing but things needs to be placed properly i would say mm. that's what one thing uh, we actually came into a conclusion like uh, i mean uh, that from that uh, web conference that we did uh that whatever the ideas 
be that needs to be reached out to the government as well so there's a support from the tourist boards as well i mean uh, for see there are certain acts i think you also know that only uh, tours inside the country mm. don't actually tour outside the country there are there are certain classic bands i also know that got to know that they only tour inside the country they don't tour outside the country no matter what that's where they make their buck and basically from playing rock and roll or heavy metal so they only tour inside the country they don't need to go outside the country to play from inside the states from region to region so working out things in sri lanka i think we need to from this uh, situation onwards i believe uh, we should take our message to the legal authorities as well i mean we were been doing that not that we didn't mm. we need to place it properly in authority level this is happening and it's a thing that it's a cultural thing that has been happening for centuries all over the world <laughs> no yeah. i mean there is something that a uh, lot of people fail to realize that uh, the rock and heavy metal always had that rich culture see always had that you know from if if there's a you know now if uh, if, if if there's a if there's a family and uh, if his father was listening to rock and roll that same idea would be go to his son and all the generations as well so we have that are a never ending uh, age sort of a thing starting from uh, the age of uh, 16 to uh, from their 20s to until they actually pass away so mm. that part of a generation is there so what the governments and the authorities should realize is that there's a never ending uh, say a client base for rock and heavy metal at any country i mean in sri lanka it's uh, when it comes to the entertainment industry it's very much uh, bias to a certain entity see uh, i would not like to name it but at the end of the day it's happening but we need to make sure i think uh, uh, by bringing in a lot of media like now sfm hi has been a long time partner with surya brothers actually they made sure that things are being aired properly and at the same time uh, the acts being telecasted in high tv and what not so that's actually been a bit of a you know a, a proving point that you know things could reach masters i mean a lot of the people are also getting to know mm. i mean when rock saturday four was telecasted and people were going crazy and all that like bands like sacrament abyss and bands like uh, paranoid the thing sticks to whirlwind and to all these rockapura bands and all these uh, story all the bands as uh, people started to notice shit the the like the new generation started to realize okay there are there are things more than what we see okay it's it's actually the media that selects what to show and what not to show mm. <laughs> we need to we need that's why i always say that we need to reach the higher levels and make educate them on what is happening and where you show you are where you all should basically concentrate on see yeah. it, we always have that the rock and heavy metal rock and roll always had that never ending generation and a never ending uh, family and always growing sort of crowd always had that so it's a, it's a very stiff client base client base yeah so you can do wonders with it that's that's what i always uh, think and that's one of the motives of surya brothers as well yeah considering that sri lanka is island with the nice beaches mm. where the tourists come in i saw this one one concerts that i think alan walker played in sri lanka like few years yeah. ago that that yes. they put out a very nice uh, video mm. he has a very nice video so i mean of course it can be like a party i party mm. island right where everybody yeah. can come and enjoy come because sri lanka is more of a at the end of the day sri lanka is a tropical island right and that was meant for partying and you know like i mean lot of uh, say bloggers come over here to record what's happening i think a uh, lot of foreign acts were here putting up stuff on youtube what's happening in sri lanka i mean during the easter acts also there had been 
lot of people documenting what's going on inside Sri Lanka even during these times also there have been a lot of foreigners I mean there's a that's why I always say that there's a never ending market for that market you need to care proper entertainment for that yeah and then one thing the one thing is we are just below india right india probably mm. is like one of the biggest markets for metal exactly so if 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 bands are coming to colombo wouldn't indian fans will fly to colombo because it's of easy. course it's very easy i mean I, I mean i think i think uh, i i was really sad so uh, i think uh, probably india might have had resources to provide and i think uh, when metallica came down to india right mm. if our people looked into more wider angle and a wider expandable level these guys might have actually bought down metallica over here as well right people saw it clearly what look at the audience jeez that 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 was insane the metallica audience yes in, uh, which india had so uh, i think uh, uh it's it's time for us to educate the government and educate the legal authorities what's going on when it comes to this culture and when it comes to this music there are there are people but mm. there are stations as well you know business works in lot of ways chennai <laughs> you, you, <know. laughs> so you need to properly give that you know uh, idea for them to plant it properly you need to give them what what sort of uh, give and take your uh, earning from this right that's 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 basically the motive is basically even behind surya brothers i believe even behind lot of other motives also that provides uh, uh, that basically promotes original music is to see our talent in other countries but thank god we were able to see up to now i think uh, this team bands like mass damnation stigmata and uh, paranoid thing playing in afghanistan and all that and for some reason for blessing reason we were able to see rotting christ the bands like asylee dying yeah and cryptos over here so it's something so there 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 are actually ways i mean it's all about uh, giving that uh, you know mending your ways and you know putting that, <laughs> planting the seed <laughs> yeah there are ways that's why that's why always the possibilities are endless you just need to make sure and make them understand what's the essence behind this yeah so pubudu i think i mean if we keep on talking i think we can go for hours uh, yes <laughs> <laughs> so any uh, any message to people who supported your shows and going to your shows surya uh, at the end of the day uh, first of all i need to thank you what you guys are doing what uh, you are actually from i'm i'm really proud chana one thing i always i always told my people as well as you are a sri lanka you are staying in philippine and doing this sort of shit stuff we have we we having this podcast and organizing gigs over there that's something huge i'm really proud of that fact thank you and that's the bottom of from my heart i'm saying you that and uh, the other thing is uh, i think we need to take this uh, as i told you on the messenger also we need to take this to the other level as well <laughs> to the next level as well so uh, pretty good thing that we have planned now basically when we are planning also we plan two years ahead if you are planning it, things on 2020 we are planning it for 2021 and 2022 right so that's how things are rolling uh pretty good things we have planned for 2021 and lot of things to look out when it comes to original acts because that's the motive that's the our uh the the main thing is heavy metal and rock and roll to be the main genre in sri lanka so main type of music it could be in terms of commercially non commercialized at any level we want it to be the main thing so for that we would cross uh, mountains and move mountains and sh- do shit but at the end of the day we want to nurture the original talent give space for that so for 2021 we have planned a lot of things unfortunately the things that we planned for 2020 just was an utter waste yeah but uh, i wouldn't say utter waste also but this as i told you earlier this lockdown did some positivity in terms of brainstorming in terms of building things for the future 
So, uh, shout out for entities like uh, Mastream Rock, Ravan Kaman, and our partners, Decibel, SFM, Hi, for you know, st sticking with originality. And uh, again, thank you for me inviting me. So, basically, we will be able to have a brainstorming session as well, just like this. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you, Ayer. Yeah. So, Pukudu, thank you for doing this. Uh, really yes. enjoyed this conversation. So, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I remember going to those rock Saturday concert gigs before those days, early, early, like 2000s. And, mm. and then I really want to do something back to, I want to give back to something to Sri Lanka. So, that's why I always like you know, <laughs> keep in touch with all the I, I'm really proud of that fact. And... Uh, that's that's something I always admire when it comes to people who actually work towards originality because you and I clearly know that's a very tedious process. Yes. Like it's a it's a very it's a very tough job, you know, creating, nurturing talent and asking them to work towards originality. Because I know anyone can play a cover, anyone can improvise a cover and play, but when it comes to originality, it's a different game. So <laughs> you and <laughs> Really know how hard it is to, you know, uh, if if a if a certain band is playing full on covers, much done. Don't play covers, but try to play originals, your own stuff. Like you ask, <laughs> listen to you, and you know, make getting them and uh, trying to make them a name. It's a bit of a tedious process, but I'm very happy that uh, our bands and the musicians who are in the rock and heavy metal scene are doing really good in terms of uh, playing concerts and uh, in terms of making the original music. A lot of things are looked forward to Chandaya in terms of other guys. Uh, Sticks are releasing another single uh, within a couple of uh, months or weeks, maybe. And uh, this is releasing their full-on, full-length album uh, uh, within this year. Mm. And a lot of good stuff to see. And I think PE Paranoid is also working on the album. So a lot of, lot of things to see. Uh, you'll see more things from Sri Lanka and I'm, I'm happy to see things from Philippines as well because I actually, like, uh, apart from Sri Lanka, I've been in touch with uh, you and Salman from Bangalore and Mikey from uh, Aussie mm -hmm. and all those people around from Sri Lanka, from the Maldives scene. I mean, when it comes to the rock and heavy metal scene, it's a never-ending process. And it's a never-ending uh, giving sort of a process as well. It, and it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's very amazing. And the music is amazing. I think the, the culture bond is also amazing. And I'm, I'm really happy about that. Yeah, Pupudu. So tell everyone how you, they can follow you or your social media and Surya Brothers social media. You guys can uh, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and uh, on Facebook. Uh, keep in touch with us on CLE. You guys can contact us for anything, for any information in terms of originality, in terms of nurturing your talent and everything. And at the same time, keep in touch with uh, the Channa podcast as well, because you will get a lot of information from people from other countries as well. Just like this, you'll be able to see a lot of podcasts. Uh, you know, uh, get it to his Apple, Spotify. I mean, you're on Google Podcasts as well, no? Yes, yes. All the platforms, actually. Stay in touch with his uh, Facebook platform and everything. I mean, uh, there's a lot of uh, knowledge there. <laughs> there's a lot of knowledge there. And uh, shout out to the fans. Shout out to the people who are watching this online and live. Sacrificing their time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's amazing I think it's amazing for us to as from an organizer to organizer from a music enthusiast to another enthusiast I think uh, this has been a good time <laughs> yeah yeah so Pupu, thank you uh, hopefully welcome. I don't know maybe in the future I can meet you in person yes <laughs> why not <All> right. <laughs> okay brother take care you too yeah. you too